I just uh, was meditating on some things. My mind was in one direction and I was really concentrating on something completely, completely different. I kept thinking about that illustration of Jesus when he told the fig tree that no one should eat of your fruit ever, right? Because Jesus comes across this fig tree. He's with his disciples because Peter even says to him, Lord, that fig tree you cursed, look at it because it had dried up and withered away. Jesus never really said, fig tree, I curse you. But parents do it all the time to their kids. When you say you're never gonna amount to be anything, you fail you, you you'll never amount to be anything. Um, that's, a, that's definitely a curse to put on children, wouldn't you say? Because what a child does is a child will will, okay, they'll eventually come into agreement with it. And then when they come into an agreement with those negative words, they will believe it and they will act upon it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Kind of like what we should be doing with the Word of God. The Word of God. Come into agreement with it, believe it, and then act upon it. Right? Kind of like what James says, don't just let it sink in, right? Don't be just a hearer. The, he- the word for hearer he used means, you know, don't, let just, don't, don't just let it sink in. Okay, now it's become one with you. It's a akuo in Greek. Akuo for hear, hearing, hearer, to hear. So James is saying, you know, okay, you've come into an agreement with it. Now you've believed it. So do something with it. And that's what happens with a child. You know, you can, you speak negative into their life. They will eventually, even if they resisted at first, they'll come into agreement with it. They'll believe it and then they'll act upon it. And that's what happened with the fig tree. See, Jesus comes upon a fig tree and it's not even the time for it to produce figs. You know what I'm saying? It's, it was out of season. And, uh, Good morning, good morning. Little doggies back here, and they wanted to say good morning to me. (laughs) I say good morning right back to them. Um, The fig tree was not in season to produce fruit. So what was the problem? See, that's funny. I'm telling you about the stuff I was thinking about, and I'm, it's becoming a video. <laughs> Maybe. But I had a different thought come up. I'll still share it with you. But let's go back to this, because it's really important. Why didn't the fig tree, why did Jesus tell that fig tree, basically, you're never going to amount to nothing? You're a failure. And you're thinking, that poor fig tree. Because, you know, trees are alive, right? I mean, they're life. They breathe. When a tree breathes out, the stuff it breathes out is called oxygen for you and I. Right? And the stuff that we breathe out, we call carbon dioxide. Well, for the tree, it's, that's oxygen for the tree. So, trees are alive. You know? But you're not literally a tree are you so you can't really express what it's like being a tree until you live in that tree's shoes or its roots (laughs) right (laughs) just like a tree can't express what it's like being you right so jesus now he's a very unique unique being you see well, this will all tie in. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John 1, 1. In the beginning, kind of reminds me of Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning. 
See, in John, Genesis 1, the first words spoken, well, in Genesis chapter 1, because Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God did what he created. But the first words out of God's mouth in the beginning was, in Hebrew, Yahi Or. Yahi Or. Or. Or, O-H-R, is um, light. Yehi is an action word, right? What you would call a verb. Yehi, Y-E-H-I. Now, oh, there's a, a lawnmower right there. It's going to make a lot of noise. Let me go to the other side of the road. There are people walking everywhere. There's, well, not tons of people, but there's a bunch. There's a bunch of little gather, gathering of people with doggies and stuff. Okay, so check it out. God's first words, Yehi Or. So Or, O-H-R, is light. Yehi, I told you, is an action word. Right? Good morning. It's um, where we get the word yeah, yeah, or even Yah. Like Yeshua, the name of Jesus in Hebrew, Yeshua, his name begins with Yah, right? So, Yah, and then in Hebrew, in the Old Testament, you got Yah, Yahweh, right? Starts with the Yah, Yah. Yah is actually, Yah is the, if you look it up in Hebrew, it's the hand of grace. Because the letter Y is hand, the letter H is grace. Yeah, right? So, the hand of grace, I like that. So God speaks light and or, and then Yahi is B. But it's also, just like Yah is the short form of Yahweh, Yah, Yahi. That would be the short form of Yeshua. Basically, he was speaking out the manifestation of who he was because the scriptures say God is light and God is love. The two things that the scriptures say God is, he is light and he is love. So God speaks out what he is light be and light manifested light was and it wasn't in the form of the sun that's different the s-u-n it wasn't in for the form of the s-u-n right now we go back to john 1 1 in the beginning was the word okay so god speaks a word out of his mouth. And that word manifested into light, didn't it? And then John chapter 1 says that this very word, the word became flesh. Now, That word's nature, John 1, 1 says, is God. And there's just no way around it. I know Jehovah's Witnesses try to say he was a God, a demigod. He was just an angel, blah, blah. I hope you guys are past that by now. This is powerful stuff. I would hope that a Jehovah's Witness could watch this, actually, even though it might be kind of deep, you know, but... It's okay. The Bible's a deep book, honestly. So, sometimes people say you shouldn't make videos where you go too much in depth because there are Jehovah's Witnesses that are beginning to listen, you know, to truth. Well, listen, um, so I should make, like, you know, easier to understand or comprehend kind of videos. But the truth is the Bible is very deep as well. 
And it takes spirit to understand the Bible. So maybe the good thing about talking about deep things, maybe you don't think this is deep. I think it's deep. For me, anyhow, it's deep. <laughs> maybe, maybe later on in life I'll say that it was actually shallow waters, but not deep waters. But for right now, it's pretty deep for me. Okay, so maybe uh, doing videos that you might think are advanced or whatever you might call it. You might call it. I don't. I don't say, hey, my videos are very advanced. Advanced, but I'm going over deep things, right? Maybe that would cause the desire of a Jehovah's Witness to actually receive the Spirit of God in them. I want to understand what this guy's saying in his videos. I want to understand the scriptures because he presents them very differently than I've ever heard. What's it take? Well, it takes the Spirit to give you the understanding because you can read the Word all you want. Right? You can look at the physical Jesus all you want. Pharisees did it. Scribes did it. Sadducees did it. Religious people did it. Right? They can look at him all the way. The Romans that beat him. What did they see on him? I mean, they beat him. Did they see the bright shining light that he was? Huh? You see what I'm saying? So you can look at something on the outside, but you don't know what's going on on the inside. Just like I said about that tree earlier. You don't know a tree until you are one, <laughs> right? Can't really express what is going on in a tree. You can just tell what you can see from the outside or maybe even what science says. Well, we dissect it and we see how it works, but yeah, still, doesn't mean you know the tree, right? You can read all the Bible verses you want. And you won't know who this Yehi Or is. This one that manifested into light. And then who the Word was. The one that manifested into flesh. Very, very interesting things. And you know that fig tree? Going back to that. Because here we are with the one that carries the very nature of God. The only begotten meaning the only one that carried the very nature of God, the Spirit of God in him, right? That was who he was, right? Light. And that light entered into human body. The man called Jesus, the word that became flesh. What was the word? What was the word? Remember the original word? Let's go to the beginning. God's first words. Light. Or. Right? Yahi. Be. <laughs> so. <laughs> Good morning. So that's, that's actually who he was. Right? And the scriptures say God is light. So the word that came out of God's mouth is God. Now it's just a word. Well, his word is very powerful. You can't see his word, right? You can hear it, but you can't see his word unless it is written in written form, right? Written form of God's word is kind of like the body of Jesus. You can't see God with your eyes, so he put on a body, right? You can't see the Word of God with your eyes until it puts on a form like a letter. Do you understand that? So the Word manifested, and when people write letters on paper or whatever they write on, the words manifest. Do you understand? So, yeah, people heard the voice of the Father. This is my Son, the Beloved, or the Greatly Loved One, who I am very well pleased, in whom I am very well pleased. Powerful things. Now, this Son, because the Son of God, right, the Son of God, 
if you're a son of a human, you're a human. If you're the son of God, you are God. Okay, so here comes the son of God, right? Because God was birthed onto this earth in a human body, but that, that being God was eternal. So even though it entered into human form, it didn't just suddenly appear out of nowhere. No, that light entered into a human. That light always was, always is, and always will be. Do you understand that? So here comes the Son of God. Maybe that fig tree only recognized the Son of Man. The, what, what it saw on the outside. Because I'll tell you what, even though it wasn't time, the time or season, for that fig tree to be t- producing figs, it wasn't in season to produce fruit. Well, the Son of God was standing right there in front of it. And that fig tree should have immediately produced fruit for the Son of God the creator of that very tree. You understand? I mean, come on. You can say, well, how could it grow fruit that fast? Well, how did Jesus turn water into wine that fast? So that fig tree should have instantly produced not only enough fruit for him, but all his followers that were with him to eat. But it was, all, it was almost as if the fig tree is saying, ha ha, I'm not gonna produce fruit for you today. No, no, no. Oh, okay, really? Really? It's not due season. Well, I'm the one that created you. It's always time in my presence, right? Fruit should have been the moment you saw me coming. But you don't wanna produce fruit, okay? May you never produce fruit again then. Because Son of God was standing right in front of you. So may you never produce fruit again. And Peter says, look what happened to the tree that you cursed, Lord. The Lord didn't say, I curse you. But I'll tell you what, the meaning of it is right there. Because you tell somebody you'll never amount to nothing, right? And you come into a, they come into agreement and believe it, they will walk it out. Do you understand? They will walk it out. That is why you and I, whether you trust this living word that not only was spoken, light, Yahi or light be right? Who is the hand of grace? (laughs) If you only understood the name Yahweh, Y-H-W-H in Hebrew or Y-H-V-H, those letters mean the hand of grace nailed in grace, right? Whose hands were nailed in grace? So, when you come into agreement Agreement is covenant, it is marriage, it is amen. Do you understand that? If you want me to say it again, I will. Beautiful view of San Diego over here. I love this spot. It's like one of my favorite spots. I have another favorite spot to go to, to watch the sunset in the evening. But um, it's too far away. <laughs> well, I could walk there. But there's no sunset right now. It's a good spot for a sunset. But this is just really cool. You see the ocean in the background, all that. That's an area called Del Mar here in San Diego, California. Pretty. So, I know a lot of you that are watching have uh, live in areas where there's extreme weather. <laughs> So you might call me a spoiled little brat. Yeah, I guess so. Although I wouldn't think I'm spoiled, maybe with weather. 
but um, I was born here. You know, I was born here. So, so coming into agreement with the word actually takes a little trust, doesn't it? I mean, if something makes sense to you, you can come into agreement. But you know, when you come into agreement, really, you really agree, you truly amen something, right? It's not just like saying, oh yeah, I agree with you, yeah, 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 I agree, come on. Sometimes we say that word so loosely, including myself. But if you truly come into agreement, that means you're saying amen. Even the scripture says, in Jesus, he is the yes and the amen. Do you understand that? So yes and amen are the same. It's all in one package deal, Jesus. So if you are in agreement with his word, it means you are in agreement with him, the very being, which means you are in agreement with God because you cannot separate God from the, live, the, the risen Christ. You cannot, right? The only time God ever became separate with Jesus is when Jesus breathed out God <laughs> at his death because God is spirit. And Jesus says, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Well, his spirit is the spirit of God. <laughs> Just like 1 Corinthians six seventeen says, if you're joined to that spirit, the spirit of the Lord, you are one spirit with him. You understand these things? So now your spirit becomes the same united spirit joined as a married couple. They are amen. They are in agreement. Right? It's marriage. It's covenant. That's what covenant is. Covenant looks like the number 11. Because the number 11, yeah, there's two numbers there. But what happens is these two numbers reflect each other perfectly. I'm not saying my fingers are the exact same size. No, your finger, your index finger, and your middle finger, they're not the same. Come on, I'm just using an illustration. Because I don't have something in my hand to show you the number one next to another number one. These two number ones that reflect each other, when they come together as the number 11, right? What pulls those two number ones together? Spirit. There's that space in between the number one and the other number one. There's that space in the numbers, the number 11 that has you can't see with your eyes. Well, that's spirit that's drawing those two together. Do you understand that? <laughs> and the number one and the other number one is a physical manifestation of what that spirit's trying to tell you. Just like Jesus was the physical manifestation of light, the physical manifestation of the word. The word you can't see with your eyes, right? The word you can't see with your eyes. You can hear it with your ears, just like the Father. This is my Son, whom I greatly love, and I'm very well pleased. You can hear, but can you see the Father? Not unless the Father takes His nature, which is God, right? Because Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one nature, one nature, exact same nature. But Jesus was the manifestation of that nature. He put on flesh. The Word that was God put on flesh. Now, I was talking earlier about the fig tree and all that. I want to tie this in. Because what happened was the fig tree came
came into agreement of what the Lord spoke to it. That word, the fig tree had to say, Amen. Right? I agree. And when that fig tree believed, how can a tree believe? (laughs) Oh, you. You with shallow thinking and little faith. Little do you know. Little do you know. It may be different from you and I, but don't tell me that Creator didn't speak to the tree and the tree didn't hear it. Oh, you better believe the tree heard it. Why do you think light manifested when he spoke light? How can you talk to light? Hmm, right? How could he talk to a tree? And how could the tree obey? So there's some things that are just beyond our shallow little thinking, right? But when you come into agreement and you believe the Word of God, your thinking will go into deep waters. It won't be shallow anymore. Right? And the deeper and the deeper, the deeper you will go if you trust Him. Right? Because deep waters can be scary, so you think. Right? You might think it's just super enlightening and enlightening. Well, sometimes the deeper you go, I'm not saying scary as far as devil scary, fear scary, that kind of stuff. No. Be not afraid. But the deeper you go into God's Word, watch out. The deeper you want to go, the deeper you want to go, and then suddenly you find yourself being into that Word so much that it becomes you. That Word takes on flesh, and that Word becomes you. Right? You are not the body of Christ, or are you? The body. So the Word became a body the word became flesh, it says. So watch. When you start to see yourself becoming more and more like that word. I mean, the word lives in you. The word's in your spirit. But when you are in agreement with that word, and then you believe that word, what happens is you start doing the word you become the word do you understand that more and more like that word because that's really what we want to be right more and more like Jesus who gave us his identity Christ son of God son of God are you a son are you a son I certainly hope so So he gives you his identity in your spirit. But now we want to (laughs) look more like him, right? Not just like a dead tree with no fruit. We want to become like a living tree that produces fruit. Some trees take much longer to produce fruit than other trees. But that doesn't make them not a fruit tree. It is a fruit tree. See, when you received Christ in you, you recognized that Son of God, didn't you? Something made you come into agreement and believe and trust and put your faith in Him. Unlike that fig tree that didn't recognize the Son of God or refused to receive Him. Because if that fig tree would have received Him, that fig tree would have instantly produced fruit for Him immediately because He was hungry. And I think His friends that were with Him were hungry too. Right? Because the human man, Jesus, got hungry. The God in Him, (laughs) the Spirit does not hunger right does not thirst yeah but the man did he even said i thirst didn't he so you got to understand you got to understand these natures the son of man and the son of god when you start to understand that 
And then when you really go into the written word, which is all about the living word, you'll understand yourself better. You'll understand yourself better. Because like I said, you, you start to become it. If you want to get to know you, who you are, read the scriptures for who you are, not for, for who you are not or trying to become or hoping if you do something enough, you'll become it, right? And eventually you will respond. Even if you are like that lazy tree that says, no, I do not produce fruit. Well, sometimes we can be like that ourselves <laughs> because it's just like James said, what I said earlier, you know, be not just a hearer. Somebody that says, okay, I come into agreement. I believe the word you said, right? He says, but now do it, do it. So don't be like the fig tree that didn't do it. You do it, right? And I'm not saying if you don't do it, Jesus is going to say, may no one ever partake of your fruit. Because he wouldn't need to actually say that. It's just that you would have to face the fact, no one's partaking of my fruit, right? Because you're not going out there sharing it. You're not going out there letting others know about this fruit. Maybe they can say, where can I get some of that? I want to produce this fruit. You know, because they can just come to you every time, every time, look for you. Just like people, they look for God in churches. They go every Sunday to look for Him. Where can I get Him? Where can I get Him? So they rely on going to places on Sunday or even some people Saturdays, right? You know about them. Looking to get this fruit, which only comes from God, which only comes from God. I'll tell you what, I'd rather be that living tree, right? Instead of having to go and find that tree somewhere else all the time. Who has that fruit? Who has it? Where, who, where's the place that has God? No, I want God in me. And if God is in you, that means you are born again and you are born as a son even women huios in greek son you are a son of god right that's what being born again is you are a son of god and on the outside you are son of man on the inside, you are son of God. On the outside, you are son of man. Jesus, on the inside, son of God. On the outside, son of man. Now this is all in the scriptures. It's all there. And if you're new to this channel or you haven't heard me speak before, you might be somebody that just thinks, what a bunch of blasphemy, what a bunch of blasphemy, what a bunch of blasphemy. But maybe the problem is you're dependent on your faith more than you are dependent on the faith of God. What do I mean by that? Well, it's like my roommate told me last night. He said he grew up in the Catholic faith. I'm not going to put down Catholics. I'm sure there's some Catholics that watch my channel. I just am using this because this is what my roommate said, right? And I understand what people mean by that. Like myself, I grew up in what's called the Jehovah's Witness faith. So, is the Jehovah's Witness faith the faith of man? 
Or is the Jehovah's Witness faith the faith of God? Right? Because the fruit of the Spirit is faith. And if that Spirit is God, God is Spirit, right? So if that Spirit of, is God and faith is the fruit of that Spirit, it's what God manifests into, right? Fruit is the manifestation of something, do you understand? The fruit of something is what manifests. So, is your faith a fruit from the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit? Or is your faith the faith of man? Religion group, right? I'm in the Catholic faith. I'm in the Jehovah's Witness faith. Well, why don't you just kind of like take that believing aside, put it somewhere else and say, I want the faith of God. Not which religion he chooses to represent him. No, no, no. He de- religion doesn't represent him. You are the ambassador. You are the ambassador of Christ. Religion is not. Paul said that to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors of Christ. Right? Christ is the spirit that is in you. So now you take that spirit. An ambassador represents. Right? An ambassador is not a substitute. But an re- ambassador represents. If an ambassador of one country goes to another country, the ambassador represents the country that he came from. So if you come from God, and that is why you are called son, right? Well, then you represent. And when you start to realize these things, come into agreement, Agree with the word, believe the word. You'll be doing, living out that word more and more and more, right? You will grow just like a baby grows. They say that when a baby learns a new language, when anybody learns a language, at first you hear sounds that you try to repeat. You learn the language, maybe by what's written down. You know, babies, they don't read, but they imitate by hearing and hearing and hearing. You can read the words of the Bible all you want, but if you are not hearing what they are telling you, right? They won't become yours. Because this is what I learned about speaking in a language. If you want to learn a language, when you really, really know that you learned a language, it's when you start to think in that language. Right? Once you start to think in that language, that thinking becomes natural to you now. Whoa, you're just thinking in another language. Right? You can speak it. You can repeat it. You can take the Bible, repeat what you're reading. But when you start thinking in it, means it became you. And you became it. And that word (laughs) that became flesh, well now, You're that word who is still walking in this flesh, (laughs) right? Interesting things to think about. I hope this message has blessed you. I think I rambled on long enough.
I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this walk, and I will see you all in the next video.